<laughs> Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who scored a victory last week on Dana White's Contender Series, Steve Garcia. Steve, man, I appreciate the time. I was sharing the story uh, right before your fight last week. The first time I became familiar with you was actually when you made your Bellator debut. I'm walking up to the venue, getting ready to get in, to get a little early, get set up. And I asked one of the Bellator PR people, I go, who, who is all these fans here for? I'm like, oh, they're here to see Steve Garcia. They go, he was the first fight of the night. Now he's going to be much later in, in the card. Uh, so that was kind of my first introduction to it. I think a lot of people got to know you uh, throughout your Bellator time. And now uh, with knowing you on the Contender Series, is there something you would want the fans to know about you that maybe hasn't been put out there yet? <clears throat> As far as what goes, what, yeah, whether, like, it, whether, whether it's in terms of your fighting career, who you are just as a person, is there something that necessarily hasn't been said about you that you would really like people to know about you? Um, I don't necessarily know. I, I normally put everything out there. I don't know. I don't hide behind anything really. Um, you know, I want to say that probably the first time that you saw me at, I was probably fighting here in Albuquerque, right? Was, was yeah. that the case? You know, I fought, I think uh, it was Sean Bunch I was supposed to fight. I, actually, I was supposed to fight him a card before that. And uh, I got I sustained an, uh, a grade two sprain on my ankle. I was in a boot for a good while when I fought him. And a lot of people thought I was just pulling out of a fight that I was scared because it was just a week right before. And I told, I told, I remember telling Bell, I'm like, send me front row. I was like, I'm going to call him out as soon as he wins because honestly, he's good. And so I'm like, but tell him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to dethrone his, his little streak he's got going on. So I was happy I was able to do that into that in the third round. And I think that was kind of like the start of everything. You know, it was really just, man, it's, you know, this kid doesn't know how to fight. Because I went 14-0 and as an amateur with all knockout finishes. Actually, no, I had, I had two submission finishes. Um, but I kind of just wasn't, wasn't real big on, on submissions just because – even though fans may like submissions, I think every fan loves a knockout. You know what I mean? So I like I like to, you know, um, I like to get the, the fans going. Anytime I've been the main event, before this fight twice here in Albuquerque, um, Lenny Fresquez actually has his own promotion that he puts on here locally here at, uh, at the events. And we can never find really local fighters. We always have to, you know, fly people in to come fight me just because people over here won't take the fight. Um, but you know, I always want to impress the fans. I always want to fight for them. You know, I like, I like being that guy. You know what I mean? When, when, when you hear when Steve Garcia fights, you're like, man, we got to buy a ticket. We got to buy a ticket because if he, if, if he's on the card, you know, it's going to be good, you know? And, uh, I feel like God has blessed me, uh, with opportunities like that. And I'm, I'm honestly just blessed because anywhere I fight, especially here locally, but anytime that I ever fought outside of uh, New Mexico, I actually brought a crowd, you know what I mean? And I, and I grew, I grew my fan base and they reach out and it's, it's an awesome, I always try to reach out to all the fans, even if they hit me up on Instagram or, uh, I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to Facebook, but, uh, Instagram is like the main, the main guy that I like to, to, to kind of browse on and meet people and, uh, talk to my fans. So it's very cool getting to meet them. I may not have a, a really long conversation, but I acknowledge them and I always appreciate their, uh, you know, most of the time it's, it's it's something good. You know what I mean? I you know you always have your haters, but you know those are the way I can kind of talk to my talk to my fans, and it's always a good time when I get to do that. And of course, she had a great win last week, dominating win over Desmond Torres. Um, I, I'm sure you've probably gone back and you have watched the fight, and and you've looked at things you did well, things you didn't do well. Uh, what what are you most proud about about that performance? Um. You know, that's not necessarily what I was proud about. My coaches were more happy with some of the things that had went on. You know, um, I was able to just pretty much just listen to them. And, and even though it was, it was very strange, it was almost like so quiet, I almost couldn't hear them. You know, normally I can pull out their, their, their voices in a massive crowd going crazy. But it was a little bit harder for me to do that this time. Uh, but I just I tried to listen to them, and uh, especially at the beginning. But... Um, Obviously, the weight cut was obviously the elephant in the room. And uh, the fact that, like, I, I couldn't rehydrate the, the way I've, oh, I always used to, um, it was a much slower process. The next day, I did feel, you know, it was a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of suffering because I just had a really, really difficult time getting uh, off the weight. And, um, yeah, I, just, I, I wasn't sweating in the back. I didn't sweat in the fight. So I could tell my body was still dehydrated. 
um, given the amount of time that I had, you know what I mean? So uh, I was happy that I was able to still get, you know, the job done. But when you're in front of Dana White and everybody else, you better put on the hell of a performance or a performance of your life, you know, because those are the eyes that I want looking at me. Yeah, I didn't get a contract. I think if I would have won uh, or made way, I would have gotten a contract that night. And I, I you know, I told, I, I think I said in the interview that I knew it was going to bite me back in the butt. But at the end of the day, I wanted to go in there and impress those three, you know, pair of eyes. I was like, okay, yeah, like this kid can fight, man. Let's 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 see what let's see what he got. Maybe we'll go to forty five, whatever the case is, and we'll get, we, you know, we'll we'll take a look at him, you know. And that's all I needed because um, that, that was the only thing I could control. You know what I mean? Go out there and fight to the best of my ability. And I just I really went in there and I wanted to put on a show. And I hope you know I don't know if you watched it, but I hope you were entertained entertained as much as you know some of the feedback I got from other people as well. So um, yeah. that was I that was the goal. Yeah, it was an entertaining fight. I think the one thing that people looked at is said, hey, I mean, obviously everyone's going to talk about you know, not being able to make weight. And I mean, look, you could see, obviously, there was a big size difference, but Desmond's more of a, a flyweight than, than he is a, a bantamweight. And, and Dana mentioned, you know, right after the fight, he said, you know, I, maybe we see him at 45. I mean, is that something you and your team are currently still discussing or or is the thought process, that, you know, hey, I want to I want to prove to Dana White that, you know, I can make thirty five and, and, and make it consistently. Honestly, I think we're I think we're gonna take uh take the route of just moving up. Um I've only done so I had twenty days to lose thirty pounds. Um and that was that was challenging. Obviously I didn't get the full thirty pounds. I think I got twenty like twenty seven and a half. And I was even gonna weigh in, you know, obviously with uh with the with the rod and because I was about one thirty nine, you know, even and I said one thirty nine and a half like it's not going to make much of a difference, you know. Uh, you know, you're you're in pretty bad shape. They just get you on there and just get on the scales. Like okay, so I went in there and you know I, I was I could have been 136, which you know obviously was was obviously the goal. But the last time that I did, you know, I did I've done took one other fight and it was uh, it was it was almost the same scenario. Uh, I had passed out and I split my eye open um, right as soon as I had made the weight in the sauna. Um, I made my way, uh, but as soon as I stepped on the scale, I lost consciousness and I, I fell and I busted my eye open, super glued it shut, went to weigh-ins, I got on the scale and I was supposed to fight, uh, Joe Tomanglo, uh, for Bellator. And, <laughs> uh, he called, he called Richard Charles matchmaker and he said he couldn't fight at 135. He was 162 or one, I'm sorry, 142 and he said it was getting pretty uh what do you call it? He said it was just it was getting into a really difficult spot for him that it's gonna, you know, mess up his house or it was gonna really affect his house. And I'm like, I literally just lost consciousness and I split my eye open making this weight and you you couldn't do it. You know what I mean? So I told him I was like, try to get off a couple more pounds. I was like, bro, I, I still wanna fight and um the fight didn't end up happening. He, he didn't want to make, uh, you know, make the adjustment. And uh, we actually had to cancel that fight. Um, but I think 145 is going to be the the kind of the next step in my career. I fought, I think I fought uh, 35s for about, I think I've only had two fights at 140 and 145. Or three fights, maybe. And... I, I found I found success. I think I won. I've only lost one of those fights, and it was to Elon Cruz, actually, um, who had won. Uh, I want to say two weeks prior to to my fight uh, with the contender series, and um, you know, like I said, it was just hard to find thirty fight at, fights at thirty five. And for me, I had just got done. I got married uh, in July, and then I got a, a call like a week and a half later. Saying if I, you know, this opportunity presented itself to me, and I just, I'm not, I, I'm the type of guy. I'm like, I'm not gonna pass up this opportunity. I was like, I'm gonna do everything I can to make weight, uh, you know. So I, you know, I was enjoying my little luxury, you know, getting married, you know, had good food at my wedding and everything like that. And I, I stayed in the gym, but I really just stuck with helping out my fighters. You know, I had, I had big fighters uh, getting ready for their fights, like Polly and. Um, a breezy and just different people that are getting ready for the fight. So I was always just going in there to be a sparring partner and really helping them out uh, before I started focusing on myself. So as soon as they got done, I got the call. I'm like, all right, now it's me. You know, I got it's 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 my time. So I went in there and we got pretty pretty close. And 
the preparations were there, you know what I mean? But the weight was just, you know, obviously the, the hardest part for me. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I owe, owe, you know, full responsibility for taking a fight that maybe I couldn't get the weight off exactly uh, the way that I, I normally do or planned on it. I think if I would have had another uh, another week or two, that would have been a, a not a, that would have been not a problem if that makes sense. Uh, but it is what it is. I can't I can't control you know things in the past. I can only move forward and uh, forty five might might be my next de- that is going to be my next uh, destination. And you'll see me probably in my next fight at forty five. Even prior to this this fight that I fought, it was at forty five. I fought uh, Andrew Whitney at forty five. It is kind of the mindset of, you know, hey, let, let me get on maybe a, an LFA or a, a fight promotion that's on Fight Pass to kind of show, you know, the UFC, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm a guy that, I, you know, you need to have. Yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with a really good management company now. And uh, Jason House is my, is, my, is my manager. Shout out to him because, you know what, that guy's – I've been with him a short amount of time and he's done the most for me in my career besides – the fights that maybe my coaches have got for me and stuff like that uh, outside of my inner circle. So I hired a, a management company, he came in, and he's really worked with me. He got me on the show, and, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see where we're going to go. I mean, there, there's even a possibility for, like, a late notice replacement in the near in the near future, hopefully maybe with the UFC. But if we have to go the LFA fight or the LFA route, I'm sorry, uh, you know, we'll do that. Does it, it doesn't really bother me. Um, like I said, my fight before this, my last fight was at 145 and, um, I got hit twice. You know what I mean? I, I really, I felt strong. I had, I was able to make weight with ease, you know, and that was back in May. I actually overcut by three pounds. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm going out there and I'm going to punch you in the face till, uh, the ref stops me. So it doesn't really matter what weight class I go at 55 and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hit you as hard as I can. Doesn't matter what weight, but forty five is probably where we're moving next. Does you know with the, with the move up to forty five? Does how does a do you alter your strength and conditioning program to maybe you know put on a, a little more weight? Because I mean, obviously, there, there's fires at forty five. There are some big dudes. Absolutely, I have I have buddies that I fight at uh, at thirty five, and you know, I last time I talked to him, I, asked, I was like, oh, I was like, how much you weighing, bro? He's like, dude, I'm like one seventy four. I'm like, freak, I've never been past 168, you know? Uh, and then I have I have 145 buddies, and they some of them walk real lean, and they're about 175, 170. I'm like, man, I was like, right, well, you know, I got to use what God's given me is, you know, these, these this this body that I got, and uh, we're going to add some, some more muscle to, uh, to my body and maybe uh, a little bit more strength, maybe not size, but strength difference, strength training. Uh, 35, I didn't really utilize a whole lot of that because I always had the advantage as far as the strength goes. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, once we, once we apply this, you know, I think it's not going to be much a big deal. You know, I don't only, only, only we're going to have a big, big problem because I'm a big 35 er and then I'm, I might even be a little bit bigger, you know, 45 er than most, you know, you look at Chad Mendez and all these guys that fought at 45 and they're five, six, five, seven, but they got, you know, they kind of built like a pit bull. You know what I mean? They just real broad. I'm I'm lanky and I'm I'm kind of you know uh, big at the same time. So you know, I just I just got to use what you know I have and uh, go out there and uh, punch someone in the face so they fall. And of course, we look forward to seeing whenever that next fight may take place. Steve, I really appreciate time. Of course, I would know they can follow you on social media. If there, anybody want to shout out, the floor is yours, man. Oh, thank you. Uh, always a shout out to my wife. I love her to death, and my daughter uh, Haley. Yes, um, they're, they're everything to me. But um, you know, my my sponsors, uh, SMI Facility Services, uh, Unleashed Sports Nutrition, which is my supplement company with uh, Corey Sipta, and then my chiropractor uh, Brad Maestas. Those those are really the ones that are really helping me out, evolving my game, that are contributing to my my training. And I just want to thank you guys and also my new management company, uh, Iridium. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. I appreciate you guys and, and all the everything, everything that you're kind of helping with me with. And uh, my God up in heaven, always got to give a shout out to him. And thank you, man. I appreciate you for, you know, bringing me on your podcast because I get to display and, and talk to you a little bit about myself and my gym, my team, my coaches are great, all everybody, you know, so 
Uh, thank you for giving me a platform to to vocalize that, you know, to your audience.